Welcome to the Just Nimit recap. If you haven't heard of Just Nimit before, we challenge you to solve a weekly data science problem with a Nime workflow. In the recap, I'll give some of my thoughts on the problem and showcase a few of the solutions from the community on the Nime form. Now, last week's problem was on some football analytics. So this is European football. So for any Americans out there, we're not talking about American football. We're talking about soccer, uh, which is not my area of expertise. So when I think about football teams in this way, um, some of the teams that I think of are Brazil and Germany. Um, Germany certainly comes up because I work with so many Germans. Uh, one of the things we're going to do in this challenge is look into which teams have the most wins of all time. My money's on probably on Brazil um, as somebody who doesn't know too much because I'm familiar with them as a team and I also don't work with that many uh, Brazilians. So let's let's see what we find out. But on to the challenge. As the 2024 European Football Championship unfolds, let's dive into football history with a data challenge. Today you are asked to create a data app that allows users to check for any time frame what the top three teams with the most football victories were. Who are the top three teams of all time and who were the top three teams in the 1980s? Okay, so I'm going to show you three solutions, the first of which is from Arif Rama. But I want to first look at the data set down here. So what we have is a history of all of the games. So we have a date, home team, away team, and their scores, as well as a few other bits of information. So to go through here and see which teams have won the most games, first we're going to have to implement ways of shaping our data correctly. So let's look at how one user has done this. So in the data pre-processing component here, they've done some cleaning, some replacing, um, some manipulation of the date and time. And then we get into this component as well. We see quite a few more things and we have some grouping here. So what I'm kind of expecting to see, um, and I don't see one in this particular workflow, is a rule engine. Um, we could use a rule engine really well here to look and see which team scored more points and assign a winner in that way. But something that is cool to see inside of this data app is this data app header component, which you can find on the Nime Hub. Um, and this gives you a cool way of getting a title and onto your data app. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Looking at this first dashboard report, uh, we see that header at the top here, which is a little bit squished. Here we go. Um, that data app header at the top here, which makes it look really professional, right? And then a filter to adjust that time frame. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's adjust the filter here, change that a little bit. And we see a different distribution on the line plot, and then our map here loads slower as well. There we go. Seeing some of our tops teams here. All right, so that's a really cool way to see the distribution on a map, see which teams are winning lots of games around here. But let's look and see what the next data app shows us. So the next app is by Mr. Ikaro. Let's look at his data app, his dashboard here. Again, we're seeing this filter at the top, a great way to make it easy for an end user to adjust that um, timeline. And this data app has a lot less stuff in it, no visualizations, but it's also very clean and easy to read, right? So I can very clearly see who these top three are from the 1980s. South Korea won the most in the 1980s. And if I refresh this and look at the full timeline, I see Brazil, that's who I expected at number one, followed by England and Germany. Those make sense to me. If we look at maybe up through 1947, just out of curiosity, we see England having won the most games in the distant past. And Argentina's up here too with Sweden. Cool. Now the final workflow I want to show you is by Gan Hadak. So let's take a look at his data app. And here we see a third way that we can do this. Instead of using a filter for that numeric value, that integer slider, we can use these radio buttons as well if we want to just select a decade. And one of the things that I think is really cool is this isn't actually a plot that I've used before, this kind of snake plot here, where we can see the rankings of the different teams across the decades. So England starts off second, gets up to first place, drops pretty low, 
in the 1910s here. Um, kind of going up and down, wiggling all over the place. Looking for anybody who's stayed at the very top for a long time. I'm curious where Brazil pops up. When do they start playing? Uh, I see them here. And they kind of start winning a bunch of games and they kind of stay up at the top the whole time they're playing. And that's really interesting to see. All right. So those were the workflows I wanted to show you this week. Thank you for tuning in to the Just Summit Recap. The new challenge comes out tomorrow. Don't forget to submit your solutions on social media with the hashtag JustNimeIt. See you next week.